Oh, we're live, bro. It's great. I know. Look at that. Look at you on the pod, dude. You got this fresh Faraday blanket. We got two Faraday blankets right now. This is not sponsored at all, but we got it going. We'll, we'll get that for you one day. Yeah. I, I mean, that, if you could manifest that for me, I would very much appreciate that. Little uh, little host and agent action. I, I can uh, double dip for a bit. You would be a great agent, honestly, I feel like. Yeah. Is that something that you've ever at all been... In and I mean that in a positive way, yeah. because there are agents, there's... There's several different types of agents you'll come across. And I think there are so many dope ones that are just like, like, I, I imagine, I mean, this in the best way, like clients would like love to work. Do you like, like, do you have like clients under like, not to get too much into work, but that yeah. you like work directly with? Oh, uh, thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate that because as you know, we both have worked at agencies before. We're not there anymore, but I would say what I really was drawn to about an agency was what is a good agent versus a bad agent? And I really got to see, okay, a good agent actually cares about their clients and is truthful on both sides. The bad agents, like, they'll lie to the buyer, then they'll smidge a little truth with their client. And it just it snowballs. And really, it's just like, do you care about being with people and being a people person, building relationships? So I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. What about you, my man? You, uh, you started in the agency space. I did. Now I you, uh, you're killing it in North Hollywood Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah, you, I love you. it. Shout out to the comedy chateau. I appreciate you being there that one time. That was a great night. Shout out uh to uh one of those comics. She she looked in the corner. It was Jacob, Henry, Griffin, and I. We're just minding our business right in the corner, watching, waiting for you. She looked straight at us. We were not saying anything, no, no talking. She's just like, get a load of these douches in the corner. <laughs> we're like, damn. I remember that. Him. She did kind of go off a little bit. Yeah, we're like, damn, okay. I, I think see. she was a bit of a cougar. <laughs> perhaps a bit of a jaguar if you will i don't know she was uh she was on the prowl i think she was excited i think she wasn't expecting that you guys were going to be there bro question for you and i don't know the answer to this when did we first meet that is actually an excellent question <laughs> because I, I remember meeting you you visited philly you visited me at yes. college so i i imagine it had to have been before then in L so you you grew up with, did you go to school with Henry? Is that how you guys know? Like, how do you know, like, our mutuals? Yeah, the yeah. So, I mean, growing up, bro, I grew up in, in West LA, but I had family that had a place in Malibu. I never had like, friends of my age who, who lived in Malibu. And that was something that every time I would go out there, I would see kids my age, like, hanging out. I'd be like, oh, man, I, I wish I knew someone. And then fast forward all the way to high school graduation, I meet our mutual pal, Henry, drive him home. He, uh, he had a little fun that night. He needed to drive home. <laughs> You're a great, you have been a, doing a lot of people's solids with driving. Honestly, probably been saving. You've probably saved people, I imagine, but also just a deed that shouldn't go unnoticed. You're it's, it's admirable. And honestly, I've started taking up, you know, some inspiration in driving as well. I think it's uh it's powerful. Wow. Thank you, bro. I mean, what I've always thought about it is I'm someone who's never really consumed alcohol and it's allowed me to be the DD. So one, I get to be with my friends completely sober, having fun, but two, making sure they're safe and everyone's getting a last stop. And you know how many fun conversations that facilitates like the last stop it's it's 1 a.m after a really good night out i know in la that's that's not that late for some people but for me it is and you come home and it's the last ride with your friend and you're just talking talking about life um that, that means a lot to me but bro we got to talk about the first time we met yeah. what our boy henry did to you and, was, and this your the frat. was this the college party yeah. so that honestly i think we could talk count that it. we could count that yeah. as the first time because that's probably the earliest mutual memory that we've shared do you remember what he what he did to you i i remember very well and it is so on brand it is in line with his humor so i i commend him for staying true to his brand of that Before trevor gets into the story he was in a good frat in <laughs> i appreciate that i was you know in a good frat that will i will i would i would consider it a good one many many other people would um, except probably certain girls who didn't show up to our parties, but we um, we had a solid on campus house right in the prime you know prime real estate right in the middle of our main walk, Locust Walk, uh, my favorite place to walk, probably the main place too, and at UPenn, and we were having a, we I think we had hired a DJ. It was someone like 
Yeah, you guys were popping. It must have been Sagala because that was the one that the guy we'd always have come back each year. And then he would like party with us too. <laughs> and like, I don't know if he ever got with the girl that was in the fraternity, like in the one of the sororities <laughs> uh, or something like that. But anyway, we like would hire a DJ for a night and then it starts later. Like the guy doesn't go on probably till like 11 or yeah. midnight. And then um, <laughs> Henry brings you who's visiting to show up <laughs> At the very beginning, inception of the party, where people were still at other apartments and off-campus houses pre-gaming and doing their whole thing, he brings you to the beginning when no one is there and then proceeds to take a video of the dance floor with nobody on it. There's like, there's like DJ, like there's not even a DJ up. There's just like music coming out of the aux at low volume. There's some strobe lights. It just looks like a hopeless 4 a.m. scene after nobody getting laid but when in fact it was just the beginning what i loved about that too i'm pretty sure he waited to send it until the party was actually getting a little livelier and then he sent it making you think wait why is no one here at what at midnight god good shout out lucky good yeah guy. shout out wait were you behind the origin of the nickname lucky for our good friend henry dude i really don't want to take credit for this i can take credit for others but this one i remember Shout out Lucky if you're watching. You probably are, if we're being honest. Um, yeah. He tunes in every week, actually. They're like a little unlucky spur in life. You know, relationships, work, life. And I think we kind of just started calling him Lucky to boost his confidence. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. And uh, since then, he's just been lucky. And bro, what? If, why do people call you Travis? I, I kind of like it, but it comes out of nowhere. Uh, it, it originated in eighth grade history class. U eighth grade U.S. history which is like a pivotal class, I guess. You take that constitution type test. And uh, my teacher, what was his name? I usually actually remember the names of all my teachers, but I don't remember this That's guy's name. That's a good name. trait. A lot of people kind of just forget. And like, I, you really don't remember your eighth grade teacher? I think it's because one time in roll during roll call, he just mispronounced my name as Travis. <laughs> Bro, I got a question for you. What do you do? Like, what makes you happiest when you don't have anything to do? Like, what's your favorite hobby? Something that gives you peace? That's a good question. I like that one. I think um, just being around good, positive people, even meeting new people or just like seeing a friend, just something simple as that. It doesn't have to be like yeah. a huge event, some crowded bar or something with a lot of excitement. I really think it's just connecting with people. That's real, man. What about I, you? Damn, that's a that's a great one. That's gonna make mine sound so shallow. I'm just like, bro, if I can get in a great basketball run with my brother and friends, oh, that's I don't, the best. I don't think anything beats like, and you know this. I mean, guys, look at his arms. Come on, <laughs> a good workout followed by a great meal with friends, followed by shower, followed by relaxation. Those four steps, bro. I, I'm set for. I don't need anything else in life when yeah. you get those. I always appreciate those like dinners with friends that whether you're just cooking up a DiGiorno pizza at 1 a.m. or you're going to super nice steakhouse. Yeah. A meal with friends. That's and also I like the 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 sports. I miss that about being a kid and growing mm -hmm. up. And that's I think that's why I think pickup basketball is great. I, I went and played at the um Olympic Olympic. Santa Monica run. I was not uh, an Olympic basketball oh, player. Wow. Whoa, I was like, yeah, I was on the. I was actually hiding. I was on the Armenian <laughs> basketball team. We didn't qualify, but you know, I'm a. Uh, I'm secretly. I'm the Armenian sniper from downtown, honestly. But yeah, I went and uh, played pickup basketball for the first time in a long time with my cousin, and he's he's big into basketball. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm way more. I claim he claims that he could smoke me one on one. We have we haven't played in about five years. But do you have those like types of basketball rivalries, oh, yeah. bro? Speaking of one on one, my little brother's three years younger than me, and we went to Italy for the first time this summer. We found this beautiful hoop secluded in a just stunning forest and right on the water. And in that moment, we bought a little basketball from one of the Italian stores, and he proceeded to beat me officially with me trying my hardest one-on-one -on -one, first time in my life it was i knew the moment was coming because he's been better at basketball for a while but it was it was a pretty sobering experience that i imagine that's pretty humbling the this the that's that's funny because my younger brother is two years younger than me and we have those same types of rivalries with things I, a big one for us growing up was wiffle ball mm. we'd play in the front yard and it was just such a simple easy game plastic bat plastic ball but 
if he hit a home run off me, oh my God. You're not here at the end like of it. Him, it's like the equivalent of me getting crossed up and then him or him just like pulling and doing a step back hard in three in my face kind of thing. You know, like there's a time when the little brother is bound to, yeah. bound to get, it's impossible for them to not if they're That's out there working. Life. Yeah. So wait, what was, how many siblings do you have? I got one younger brother, bro. But question, you mentioned wiffle ball. Spike ball or pickleball, if you, had, if you had the choice. I think growing up, I would always choose wiffle ball. So I was a big baseball guy, and it was just kind of a thing for us. But I think I haven't got too into pickleball, like the, the, the way it's been popularized. I've played it, and I've gone and like met friends like in New York. Yeah, I played with Lucky at Central Park. Is it true it's like 80 an hour there? Yeah, like, I, that's insane. about it, yeah. Oh, my God, bro. It's where's crazy. where's the where are the good pickleball spots in LA though? <laughs> the not good, to not to expose them, oh, but of if, course, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say like half of them. Um, Roxbury Park's pretty solid. You can get get in for ten dollars if you're a non-resident. Pretty sure it's either like less or free if you are. Um, my uncle's house. Shout out Uncle Bill. Um, we get to play there a lot, which is great. You got to pull up sometime, bro. I would say here. Here's a story from from pickleball that involves our friends for um for my birthday. This is back before we were closer, folks. Trevor's obviously getting an invite next time. For my birthday, I had a little pickleball tournament. And I brought Leonard, Lucky, and then a lot of other friends and family. It was a friend's family tournament. I make it to the finals with Leonard. Henry is complaining that I, I took the best player and we're about to win. And then I proceed to lose in front of my entire family, friends, um, and then the person I was seeing at the time. Uh, I lost to my cousin and my good friend, Sam Putzer. Shout out, Sam. Shout out, Julian. That was rough. That was rough. Leonard, we we completely choked that game. We continue. What would you say about Leonard's skill? <laughs> In general, we can be we can be quite frank. I haven't, I haven't seen it. That's a good it. question. That's a great question. Leonard's skill, he knows what he's doing out there, man. But he would be the first to tell you. I think he choked under the bright lights. You know, there are a couple females there. Um, my mom was there, you know, I, I think he, he got a little nervous and he definitely didn't bring his a game, but Leonard, I know you're watching this. We all know you're a good pickleball player, but the audience needs to know everyone has bad days sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's a good, that's a good teammate right there. You know, like sometimes, you know, we fail, but we have good teammates to pick each other up. But with that being said, I'd like to officially call out Jacob Leonard to play pickleball one-on-one. -on -one. I'm officially doing this right now on the podcast. Wow. It's going to happen. He has 48 hours to respond from the time this episode drops. I'm a live witness to this. You are. You I'll, actually I'll ref it. I'll, I'll like, I'll be out there. Honestly, I think that's, you would be the fairest one of all <laughs> this. That's speaking of the um, variation of pickleball. It's, it's uh it's grandfather or father tennis, mm -hmm. which is in the family of these games. Tennis is like the, the, the grandpa. Yeah. Does where does paddle tennis fall on the spectrum of these games? That's think? a good question. And I'm sure, do you know, like the war of pickleball tennis? Have you heard about that? Not if, is this like a social it's media? Like, it's trend. like a culture war. I mean, the, the tennis, like you said, they're, they're the old school. They're, I don't want to say boomers because young people play tennis, but that's the established franchise and the pickleball games, they're starting to make tennis courts they're starting to refurbish them and mold them into pickleball courts people are losing the ability to play tennis in places and they're getting mad at pickleball they're like ah oh, it's a it's a stupid sport old people can play and it's uh it's fully become a culture war but i'm on both sides to it you know i love getting in some good action in tennis even though my form is completely haywire but uh i completely f forgot your question bro my bad i was saying where's paddle tennis rank on the spectrum it's of of, of paddle games it's coming up dude i would say have you seen badminton in the olympics not in the olympics but i had a blast playing middle school pe we had one of those little units where we oh, played yeah. a different sport badminton surprisingly surprisingly fun once you get in the swing of things it's a heater man it's a heater all right another question for you bro what are your top three favorite restaurants in los angeles that's a really good question um i think i need some more time to to think on that one and i kind of I'd say to... there's one one not i don't know if it's not favorite sit down restaurant but something that i'm very fond of it's very close to my heart um and, and this is the specific category of burritos Ooh. i would say breakfast burritos from lily's in malibu i was just talking to someone about this 
it's just not not on the i'm gotta i gotta think more about the restaurants but yeah if it, there's a specific type of food that that reminds me of my upbringing and i still fuck with today that's up there this is there, really, is there something oh, yeah. like that to you that that you just like have stayed true to mm. as a food that answer really excites me because i have heard their breakfast burritos are good now i'm getting a live kind of review from it and i've been to lily's but not had the breakfast burrito so next time next uh next late malibu night we'll hit it the next morning that um, actually yeah i grew up not really getting the breakfast burrito until i was probably in middle school i was always just getting like a burger from there because they got a they got a wide array and they got versatility on that menu and i went from burger to breakfast burrito to during COVID, I think I tried their burrito bowls. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> Insanely good. I'd recommend that carne asada steak bowl from Lily's. Oh, um, yeah. and then I've always just, you know, dabbled with the throwing the breakfast burrito in there on like a Saturday morning. Look at all this free promo we're giving out. You know, I think we might have a better shot to get um a sponsorship from Lily's because it's like, hey, Malibu kid with a podcast mentions Lily's. We'll ask for a smaller amount. I think that's a little more feasible. What do you think? I would love that honestly. I would I would don a Lily's t-shirt in every episode. If if they were if they were cool, I mean I would do it just for free, but if they wanted to go official with it, I could see myself being exclusive with with Lily's Malibu restaurant. Lily's hit them up. All right, bro, if you could have a live podcast in any place in LA, feasibly, where would it be? Other than Lily's. Other than Lily's. Um I think Little Doom. Mm, I've actually never been. The, the, the just the just like over the, okay, looking the beach, probably on like a really cool bluff, oh, so like a funny. really cool bluff in Malibu, with on a non windy day, so the audio is just there, and weather is sunny, and then it's just like just like good friends, like for you, me, Jacob, Griffin, or you know, Lucky, just just That's a group nice. of bros shooting the shit by the beach. That would be probably the coolest setting. That's beautiful, man. And to answer your question, I got to shout out La Monica's Pizzeria. I'm going to mess up the exact date, but it's been around since I think the 80s, Westwood. Um, my dad took me there when I was a super, like a toddler. It's old school New York. They bring the water from New York and it's in the dough, obviously. And it's just fantastic New York style pizza. The cheese is sweet. The tomato sauce is crackling with flavor. And they got photos of Shaq in there, uh, all these famous uh, famous people. It's, it's a really cool spot, old school, affordable, highly recommend. I got I to gotta try that. I, I've heard of that, I believe. Westwood. Speaking of Westwood, yes. Fat Sal's. Ooh. Have you tried? It's a, it's a, it's a, Ooh. It, you'll uh -oh. got to take like some time in between <laughs> each journey there. But I think during like late nights visiting my sister at UCLA, mm -hmm. that just kind of reminds me of like late night grubs. If you're like, I probably couldn't handle eating a, one of those sandwiches these days. I could <laughs> split it and that might be a, a big feat. That's but still ambitious. Are there any like late night type spots that you fuck with yeah, heavily? I've, I've heard Fat Sal's hangover is worse than like a drunk hangover. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I remember on my 18th birthday, my sister took me to an EDM concert, Zed's Dead. <laughs> And we got fat sows on the way back. And I told her, and she quotes, she quoted me on this, that the fat sows sandwich made me feel sicker than the cranberry vodkas that I drank that night. It's it's toxic, man. Late night for me, I gotta go with my my handy in and out. Open till 1:30 most nights. It's fresh. It's one of the only fast foods I'll eat. It's fresh. It's better than that's I don't eat burgers a lot at restaurants because I just think I can get a better, cheaper. And taste your one in and out. Like, why go anywhere else? That's so true. And I I think it's important to, <clears throat> especially as a Californian, to appreciate what we have with In N Out. I went there last Sunday night. Haven't gotten a three by three in God knows how long, but I went for it. Three by three, fries, Diet Coke, of course. Favorite. Do you like soda at all? You ever drink Ooh, soda? Not a soda guy. I, I used to when I was younger, but uh we Trevor actually, speaking of which. Great, great guest right here. Not only does he set everything up. Cheers. He brings me water. Cheers. The water. People say it's bad luck to cheer water. Oh, and then I'm did. like, but then I'll never be able to cheer in my life. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't agree with that rule. I did try to go for a, a cheers. Um, it was actually during Leonard's birthday at Shore Bar. I, I was 
I don't even remember if I had anything to, yeah, wait, did I, I'm not sure if I even, maybe I had some wine at dinner, but I didn't drink at the bar and I had water and I tried to cheer someone with it who was also drinking water. And they were like, that's not going to cut it. And I was like, okay, good luck. I think it's the, the act of it. It's just the signal of, Hey, we're just here out and about. It doesn't need to be a super strong tequila cocktail. You know, it could just sharing a beverage. You know, speaking of water, my mom sent me this article in the New York Times by some qualified health physician saying, in life, you really only need five things to live a happy and healthy life. Water, a good diet, no alcohol or drugs, good sleep, and quality relationships. And I, I fully believe that. I I do too, honestly. And those, yeah, working out, definitely working on all five of those things. And I've noticed, especially this summer with not drinking on a lot of nights that I in the past probably would have mm -hmm. drank on. It's made such a positive difference in the way I felt. And I know that's oh, yeah. given, but I'm just so glad that we can have a blast not doing that. Like we went out a couple Thursdays ago. That was fun. I didn't drink that night. I don't know if I was yeah actually did you you were we might have driven with you there. We yeah we parked I drove to to Bung that's where we were. We were at Bungalow and that, how funny was that, that I actually called you that was awesome. when I was at Bungalow, not realizing that you were pulling up to pick up Jacob, who was also there. That those Just those fun moments in life. By the way, every time I'm out with Trevor, he's one of my only friends who will actually confidently walk up to girls and have a legitimate conversation with them. Guys, we got to step it up. We just need to go up to, to women more. And you can't be afraid of rejection. Trevor is type A, one of those guys. I appreciate that. I'd say I would give you, I would give you that same compliment, but I notice it to, uh, uh, I've, I've noticed that you, you do an exceptional job. There are times where I, I, I do second guess and overthink and that's happened plenty. And I appreciate what you were saying, but yeah, I, I've seen you and how confidently you also do that. Oh, I'm blushing, bro. As, uh, has been a, has had a positive impact. And I think, yeah, people should take more notice of the, not w worrying about rejection aspect in the way that you do too. I definitely think about it in certain contexts that, yeah, I want to know more about if that's something that's evolved for you or it's always been something that you've kind of just embraced. Oh, thank you, bro. I'll, uh, I'll say this. And I think I've, I've said this on the phone before, but when you're thinking about going up to a girl, what is the actual worst thing that can happen? Unless you do some insane thing and like attack them. The worst thing that could happen is they say no and you both forget about it. It's like, whatever. It's all good. You move on. You forget about it. I still haven't forgotten. A couple weeks ago, I was with Vivian and Shereen, two of my close girlfriends. Shout out, you guys. I went up. I saw this, uh, this uh, stunning woman, if you might say. She was with a friend. I go up to her. I just let her know I thought she was pretty. You want to get ice cream, go for a walk around Brentwood sometime. Her face sinks. I get the, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, he's a lucky man. And I moved on. That probably is the one recently where I've still thought about, but any other both sides, like you're just going to forget about it. That's what you have to think in the moment. Cause in the moment, like I still get the jitters. I'm like, oh man, that girl looks really cute. I should go up to her, but I don't know. I, like, I don't feel it right now. And then you just do it and usually you have a fun conversation. But here's the thing, bro. I want to get your take on this. What are your favorite places or your most comfortable ones to actually facilitate those conversations. Because so many of these places get way too loud for me. I just can't do it. Yeah, I'd say I agree with you on that That end of crowded places not being ideal. I think they, they're not impossible to get that done, yeah. but they don't feel like, like it's conducive to those types of conversations. Well said. I would say like a great place is when you're with mutual friends and kind of a shared space, like a, yeah. like someone's like a housewarming party mm, or a pregame where you might not necessarily know everyone there, but it's almost reminiscent of that school type environment where, you know, there's some common, there's some, there's like some common ground in the mutual. I think the mutual friends, not even necessarily someone going, Hey, this is my friend, Trevor. Hey, this is, Sophia or whatever you two should meet like maybe if there's just more of like a familiarity mm. that that's that usually is pretty nice 
I'd say that. But as far as just cold approaching, it's tough, man. Cold Every time. approach is 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 tough. I'd say one time, like one example, I can remember that I felt like it just. I'm just thinking about like a couple years ago in college, I was out, not out and about. I was just in the in some academic building, and I saw this really cute girl. Okay. And she was just sitting there like by the coffee shop typing on her computer. And I was Pretty like, I, ideal, kind I've of. recognized, I've seen her before. Like I thought she might've been in my dorm or a couple of my classes in the past. And I was just like, this is like perfect. Like, yes, just go up to her and talk to her. So I just like did. And I was like, oh yeah, like I've, I've recognized you. I've seen you before. Like, oh, I remember I thought I brought up something. I was like, remember, I think you were in like my econ thing. And she had no <laughs> zero recollection of econ class with me. I, I might've been totally BSing that. But I was like, I, that was just one of however many examples where I was like, I got to trust my gut. And it went, well, we, we went out after that. Oh, amazing. And it was like, like you date or you just had a, we went out on a, went it was more of like a fling type, type amazing. of thing. So like, yeah, if, had I been walking by me like, oh, uh, we're in, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a building. She's studying. Like, I, I hope I'm not like, Yeah. I wasn't going to go up to her and like jump up and down and wave my arms and be like, Hey, don't study. Let me distract you. It's just like sometimes not worrying about things that, you know, making stuff up, making up scenarios in your head of things that might happen, just kind of dropping that and just kind of going forward, I think is, is helpful. How do you feel, what are your thoughts on Hinge and the the dating app space kind of almost, this might be a sinister word, but infecting that natural ability for people to go up to other people. I, I hear mostly girls complaining about it, that guys don't do it as much because I think with all these online dating apps, it's it's kind of scary. It's like people have become swipes and clicks instead of actual humans. Yeah, I think infecting is actually a good word. It's also, it's, I think it's, depersonalized a lot of dating Yeah. interactions where you yeah it almost seems like though it almost sometimes seems like the in-person ones don't exist when you get deep into the dating apps you're like oh this is how it is now i actually i don't know if i it's paused or logged out or honestly if i think i might have entirely deleted hinge a couple weeks ago after Nice. being like this is like so repetitive it's so repetitive and i'm like You know, it leads to some dates, but then a lot of times you're like, oh, you get a reply back a few days later or you don't. And then it feels like, like it almost feels like it's equated to a real life rejection, but that doesn't happen in the real world. But I just took a little break. I actually got back on it a couple of days ago. Mazel tov. Started, you know, investing in it this time. I paid for the premium, gave myself a one month window to see what I could get done with that. Does that And work? I mean, you're a good looking guy, so it'll work anyway. But I'm, oh, I've always been curious. What do, what do you notice between I think the it's booth? an algorithm. I think it, it, I think they just, the app factors that in. Mm. They say like, they'll send you profiles that are most like your type or they'll, they'll prioritize. I think they kind of give you a boost in the algorithm or sh at least show you more of the types of girls that you do like. I think they actually do a little bit because I've used just the free version, gotten those whatever limited amount of likes in a day. And then sometimes I'm kind of like, well, why does it, why does like, why, do, why does it change the vibe change a little bit? Yeah.